Hi everyone. I just uh, received this Keithley 177 uh, microvoltmeter, it's called, uh, from a buyer or seller on eBay. And uh, he claimed that it worked. In fact, I had a picture of it with the resistor connected across the inputs, and it was reading the correct resistance for the resistor. But uh, it doesn't appear to be functioning properly here. Um, there's nothing on the terminals, and it, there's a reading on the display. And I'm not freaking out of, about it yet, just yet, because uh, this is quite old, and it's quite dirty. And uh, when I push these buttons, they don't feel really positive, especially um, this one here. It doesn't want to come out when I push on it. And so, um, I'm going to go inside this thing and, and check it out, it's, and uh, just see how dirty it is on the inside, and do some cleanup if necessary. And get some contact cleaner on the uh, on the the uh, switches that are inside here. There's also a fuse in series with these terminals that protects the electronics if there's an overload. And I'll check to see if that fuse is blown as well. And just look at um, all the components that are on the circuit board. See uh, if any of the socketed parts, if there are any, are properly seated. And uh, uh, check over the electrolytic capacitors if there are any inside here and see what kind of condition they're in. And generally just see what kind of conditions um, the circuit board is in and uh, see if I can fix it. So here's the cover looking pretty dirty looks like they'd stuck something on the the top there and there's actually a little bit of corrosion inside these terminals and there's some dust on them the display is a bit dirty and as I mentioned before the these push button switches feel kind of manky and so I think it's time to have a look inside and clean up the contacts I took the screws out already. I'll just lift the cover off and uh, you'll see some of the electronics. There's this plate here and with a lot of instructions. Actually these are the uh, calibration instructions and there's the uh, fuse that's down underneath this and here are all the switches down um, there at the front and I suspect that's where a lot of the problem is is in those switches there and also if this fuse is open I think it might cause some troubles too so let's get this uh, aluminum cover off and see what we can see and there's a grounding tab here connects to the circuit board and here we are we're inside so this is pretty old school. It's all through hole parts, no surface mount. And uh, all those blue potentiometers along here, those are for setting the calibration points. And uh, not sure what all this stuff is for. Well, here's the fuse. Gonna check to see if that's open. It looks kind of dirty inside there. I bet you that's blown. And that would have certainly affect the current and uh, the current reading. I don't know about the voltage and the ohms readings, but uh, we'll see. So I just took some uh, contact cleaner here. I've had this stuff for years. I don't use very much of it. I can't remember when I bought this. I'm guessing at almost 30 years ago that I had this stuff. Or maybe not, but it's been a long time that I've had this stuff and it still works. But you just simply spray it down into the contacts here down into the open end there and just activate the switches and uh, it made all the difference in the world. I've got a 20k ohm resistor connected across the input there. Believe me that's a 20k ohm resistor and I'm on the 200k ohm range and it's reading 20.33k so the resistance is working and uh, we'll see what happens when I hook up a voltage to it. So I just hooked up my bench power supply to it and it's set to about 12 volts and uh, there we go 11.96 and that's kind of what I'm reading I think on my power supply I'll check this against my uh, fluke meter here and let's just see what we get so here's my fluke meter 11.95 volts so I would say that this uh, meter is now working and it's amazing I've resurrected um, many pieces of equipment over the years uh, I worked for uh, 
or more than eight years as a service technician fixing all kinds of equipment and uh, it's amazing what uh, a bit of contact cleaner can do to resurrect something that's not working at all and I guess during shipping this thing got jiggled around and it maybe made some of the contacts bad in the switches yeah, any of the corrosion that was in there may have just uh, activated and, and uh, opened up some of the contacts in the switches in the range select switches and uh, stopped it from working but uh, contact cleaner and a bit of uh, action made it work and even um, after I sprayed them these switches worked way better they were much smoother much more positive um, before I'd sprayed them and some of them wouldn't pop out properly when I was pushing the, the switches you can see the range switches um, when you push one range switch in the other range pops out and uh, it didn't do that too well especially over here uh, I think on the ohms this is the uh, ohms button here and it didn't so this is the uh, what you're selecting ohms volts and amps and they work the same way as these uh, buttons here and when you push one the other one pops out so I'm quite pleased this thing is actually working really well which is um, I mean the the, uh, the seller who was a seemed to be a reputable seller um, did say that it, it was old and had been taken from a lab um, uh, as a working instrument and uh, he tested it as as best he could with this resistor and it worked so I trusted that and I figured that if, if there was a problem with it that I should be able to fix it quite easily because I didn't pay very much for this um, it turned out to be a good deal so um, the next thing I want to check is current and I'm going to have to find a fuse because this fuse I got on my fingers came out of that connection there out of the uh, fuse holder there and if you look at it yeah it's hard to tell but it's open it looks like a blue inside you can see some um, burn marks inside there so the fuse is blown so I don't expect the uh, current um, reading would work properly but the uh, everything else seems to be working just fine so now I've got this uh, meter on current range and I've got this uh, 12 volt DC computer cooling fan hooked up to it and my fluke meter in series and everything's in series so I can measure the current on the fluke meter and on that guy and let's just hook it up here there goes the fan so we're reading about 280 milliamps on the key fleet and uh, we'll bring the fluke in there and we got 277 76 so it looks like they correspond pretty close perfect so it looks like my Keithley is working. Now I noticed something interesting when I have no current flowing. You look at the zero display there and there's this knob here it's called zero and if I turn it I can offset the current with it. So I just set it back to zero. Actually I think I can go negative with it as well. Yes I can. So I mean I haven't read the manual for this thing so I'm not sure. I guess this is what it's for. As I, I did zero it out and it seemed to work just fine. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, download a manual for this thing. I, I've just looked on the internet and it, it, there appears to be uh, quite a few uh, possibilities of getting a, a manual for it. And then um, I'll start hunting for some schematics too just for the heck of it. But uh, it doesn't look like I'm going to have to fix anything here. It looks like it's working just fine. Oh yeah, and by the way, I uh, in order to get this to work in the current range, of course I had to uh, replace that fuse. Now I didn't have a 2 amp fast blow, which is what, they're, uh, what they recommend to put in there. I found a 1 amp slow blow and stuffed it in there. Now this is not recommended practice because uh, I now could damage this meter if I overload it because that 1 amp slow blow fuse would probably have to exceed way more than two ounce for a, a, at least a short period of time in order to uh, to blow um, so I could damage this instrument so tomorrow when I go to the store I'm gonna go and, or down to the electronic shop I'm gonna go and pick up uh, a couple of uh, two amp fast blow fuses and stick them in there or stick one of them in there and get it working properly but uh, other than that uh, this thing seems to be working really well let's have a look at uh, the circuitry in here before we go very quickly, um, this is the line transformer, the power transformer. This switch here selects whether you're going to plug into uh, 110 or 240 volts. The line fuses here. 
um, the rectifier and filter capacitor and the three uh, voltage regulators, 5 volts plus and minus 15 volts here. This connector over here is for an optional battery pack that can be um, installed inside the cover. Uh, I don't have one for this and uh, I don't really need it, I just keep it plugged into the line all the time. And uh, I think in the battery pack itself there's some circuitry for charging it. Uh, here's a 100 kilohertz crystal. This is what drives uh, the A to D converter which is over here. This chip is a CD4060 which is a uh, oscillator and divider and uh, I think it, it's the oscillator for this um, 100 kilohertz. It also divides the uh, 100 kilohertz down to 390 hertz which is the frequency for the chopper amplifier on the input. Um, going over here, these are some of the shunt resistors for the different current ranges and um, this one here in particular is quite interesting. I'll see if I can zoom in on it. It has four terminals. You can see two there and there's two on the other end. And that's how you um, make a very accurate, very low resistance. This one here is 0.1 ohms at 0.1%. It's quite an accurate resistor. And by having the four terminals, what you do is have uh, one set of terminals um, to pass the uh, current through that you're measuring and the other set of terminals just measures the voltage that uh, that's induced by the resistor and so what it does is it just eliminates any resistance that you might have in the uh, in the lead so this would be the high the uh, high current lead here you can see the thick trace running in and out, out this way at the other end and then these other ter two terminals on this side would be the the voltage measuring terminals. So that's how you measure a current, is you just pass a current through a known resistance and you measure the voltage across it. Um, over here, this is an interesting device. It's um, an AD, what do we got here? Uh, 536. And what this does, it's called a um, true RMS to DC volts converter and so it's used in in measuring the uh, any AC voltages or currents that you you might be um, measuring so it gives you a, a, two, a true RMS value um, a cheapy voltmeter for example would measure an AC current or voltage but it could only do it at one frequency because it's optimized for that frequency and it'll give you an incorrect reading for the RMS value of that voltage um, at other frequencies, whereas with um, meters with this device in it or this kind of device in it can measure AC voltages and currents over a wide range of frequencies and still give you the proper RMS value instead of a, a peak value or or, uh, or, or something else. Um, what else we got? A lot of these uh, packages here, like this one and this one, and this one over here, and this. Most of these 8-pin packages here are uh, op-amps, and they're used for um, they're used for uh, just adjusting the gain. The A to D converter over here requires two volts input, and some of the signals may be less than two volts because this thing goes down to say a 20 microamp or a 20 millivolt um, range. And so you need to boost those voltages up to be the two volts so that the A to D converter can read it. Um, other ranges, when it's uh, reading higher voltages, like 200 volts, it has to use attenuators. And um, what this white thing here is, this device, it's a precision decade resistor. There's um, a bunch of resistors in, in there that uh, allow you to set different amp um, op amp gains and it's selected through the uh, these switches here so when you change the gain you're picking off a different uh, resistor divider across uh, in, in this device here it's a it's a hybrid circuit um, it's made under very controlled conditions and so it can be very accurate and what else have we got in here it's all pretty simple circuitry I haven't had a chance to look at the uh, 
the um, schematic yet, so I don't really know exactly how this thing is working. But uh, the output of the A to D converter is uh, four digits, four binary coded decimal digits. And they go through all these parallel traces you can see here and up onto the display. And I believe this empty socket here is for a way of plugging into and actually reading digitally um, what you're getting out of the A to D converter. So, um, a very brief overview of some of the circuitry in here. And um, this was a quick video to show you the inside of this meter and also to show you uh, what you can do to get things to work. Um, as I said, this was advertised as functioning. Um, I just had to clean it up a bit to get it to work properly. But, but now I've got a, a good functioning, accurate um, and precise uh, digital voltmeter that I can have on my workbench. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, um, give me a good thumbs up on the uh, on YouTube and uh, send in some comments if you liked it or, or if you didn't like it or whatever, but send me some comments. So stick around. I hope to see you again on the next video. Take care.